Hello, welcome to our discussion on isotopy. Isotopy is a term that was coined by a woman named Margaret Todd and the phenomenon itself was discovered by Frederick Soddy, although we say that it was rediscovered a year later by Francis Aston. However, Frederick Soddy is the person that takes the credit when it comes to the discovery of isotopy. So we call him Frederick Soddy. And like I said, Margaret Todd is the person who connected or coined that name, sorry. Margaret Todd, she coined the term isotopy and suggested it to Soddy to describe the phenomenon that he had just observed. Now, what is isotopy? Isotopy is said to be a phenomenon where two or more atoms have the same number, whether you say atomic number or just number, and then they have different masses. So two atoms that are of the same number but different masses, or you say the same atomic number but different atomic masses, are referred to as isotopes. So as it stands, looking at these two atoms, we say that they are isotopes. Why? Because their numbers down here are the same, but their masses up there are different. By the way, observe that their symbols are the same, X and X. That tells us that isotopes are usually atoms of the same element. It means also that in an exam, if you are asked which of the following is an example on isotopy or which of the following demonstrates or illustrates isotopy, you must first bear in mind that any case where you have two different symbols can never be isotopy. For example, if I give you chlorine and give you argon, no matter how you try to manipulate the numbers, they cannot be isotopes because isotopes must be atoms of the same element. And of course, that is why their atomic numbers are the same. If you have atoms of different elements, then they must have different atomic numbers. But you remember that atomic number itself is the number of protons within the nucleus of an atom. So if you say that two atoms have the same atomic number, that would in effect mean that they contain the same number of protons. If you were to put that in another way, you could say, if two atoms have the same atomic number, it is because their number of protons are the same. But the number up here, which we call mass number, mass number means number of protons plus number of neutrons. So this will give us mass number. All right. So look at this. If I have 10 protons, and another person has 10 protons, assuming we were atoms. So we have the same number of protons now, yeah? Now, if it ends up being that my mass number is different from that person's mass number, it would in effect mean that our number of neutrons are different. Because that's the only way our mass numbers would be different, since our number of protons are already the same. So if, for example, my mass number is 22 and this person's is 24, then when you calculate our number of neutrons, you'll get 12 and 14. So the difference in mass number is as a result of a difference in number of neutrons. That's why in some other texts, people define isotopy as the existence of two or more atoms having the same number of protons but different number of neutrons. So the similarity is in number of protons. So that's why I wrote here that an easy way to remember the meaning of isotopy is because the P are the same, that's the number of P protons, then you have isotopy. There's a similar case where the number of neutrons are the same, but the number of protons are different. In that case, we'll call the two atoms isotones. So isotones have the same N, whereas isotopes have the same P. Now, leaving that definition, leaving that definition here, yeah, this point is what I've just made here, that the difference in atomic mass is due to the difference in the number of neutrons. Down here, 
it talks about abundance of isotopes. Now, I need to tell you about what we call abundance or relative abundance of isotopes. See what that means. Let me, let me start by way of a simple statement. Look at this simple statement. It says, chlorine has two isotopes and they are chlorine 35 and chlorine 37 and their relative abundances are 75% and 25%. This is a common question, it's a common scenario in chemistry. Chlorine has two isotopes, chlorine 35, chlorine 37. I didn't bother showing the atomic number here, why? We already said that the atomic numbers are the same. What is more, this is chlorine. Anywhere in this world you see chlorine, the atomic number is guaranteed to be 17. It is the mass that could vary and that's why we're indicating the masses now. Now for chlorine 35 and 37 that have these abundances of 75 and 25 percent, see what it means. It means, this statement means, this expression now means, that if we randomly pick 100 chlorine atoms, randomly 100, out of these 100 chlorine atoms, around 75 percent of them will be this type of chlorine, which is chlorine 35, then around 25% of them will be this other type of chlorine. So in terms of how they occur in nature, this type of chlorine occurs more. It has a greater abundance. The natural abundance of this isotope is greater than that one is. So and that's usually in the ratio of approximately 3 is to 1, 75 is to 25. So when you are given abundances like this, they tell you, which of the isotopes predominates in any sample of the substance that you take. Now, leaving the meaning of abundance, when we are asked to do calculations in isotopy, the questions will usually come like this. See this one, it says, potassium has two isotopes, 38K and 41K, of relative abundance, 70% and 30% respectively. So it means that this abundance is for that guy, whereas the other abundance is for the 41 isotope. Now what's the question? It says, what is the average atomic mass of K, potassium? If we were to solve a question like this, there's a very simple formula we use. That formula says, Average atomic mass, which is otherwise called mean atomic mass, is equal to the abundance of the first isotope times the mass of that isotope plus the abundance of the second isotope times the mass of that second isotope. So that the average atomic mass here for this compound, or this element rather, would be the abundance of the first isotope is 70%. Now you'll agree with me that 70% can be written as 0 0.7 to save time. Yeah, it's the same thing. 70% is 70 over 100. So I can move my decimal two places backward and that's 0 0.7 times the number there, the first mass is 38 plus the second isotope, I'll write 0 0.3. I'm sure that's easy to comprehend now, 30% times the mass of that isotope is 41. So that the average atomic mass here will be equal to, I'll grab my calculator now, 0 0.7 times 38, it says 0.7 times 38. That gives me 26.6. 26.6 plus, the second one is um, 0.3 times 41. 0.3 times 41 gives me 12. 0.3. So that if I add up these values, the average atomic mass appears as um, 38.9. That's the average atomic mass. So 38.9 atomic mass units is the average atomic mass of potassium. So I've solved this question very easily. But if I were to try to use a short formula to solve this question, more like a shortcut, then I would write something like this. I would say... Average atomic mass equals light plus um, heavy, or maybe HA, however you choose to see that, times D. So average atomic mass is equal to light plus HA times D. So what is L? L is the mass of 
the lighter isotope mass of the lighter isotope and what is ha it is the abundance of the heavier isotope and then what is d d is the difference between the isotopic masses let's see if that formula will work Average atomic mass, this space is just enough for me. So I'll say average atomic mass equals the mass of the lighter isotope is 38. So I'll write 38 here plus the abundance of the heavier isotope. Now looking at the isotopes, which one is heavier? 41. And what is its abundance? 30%, which is 0 0.3 times. The last thing there is the difference between the masses. What's the difference between these two masses? 0 0.3, so that gives me, sorry, 3. So I put 3 there, so that the average atomic mass is obtained as 38 plus 0 0.9, and that gives me 38.9. So the same answer, 38.9. So this is a very simple formula that we can use to calculate average atomic mass for isotopes especially in cases where you have just two isotopes some other persons write this formula in another way they write it as well i've said some other person but it's not a popular formula i've never seen this before i write it in some other way so the second way i write this formula because i took time to put that together so i will claim ownership to a large extent you can prove me wrong please Average atomic mass is equal to heavy minus light abundance times D. This will also work. In other words, the average atomic mass can be calculated as the mass of the heavy isotope minus the product of two things. And what are those two things? The abundance of the light isotope and the difference between the masses. So look at this. I can use that other formula, I can say average atomic mass is mass of the heavy isotope is 41 minus abundance of the light isotope is 0 0.7 times the difference between these two masses is 3 so that gives me 41 minus 2.1 41 minus 2.1 gives me again 38.9 so any of the formulas in the box, six, can be used. And um, please take note, if I were to do this in an exam, like under exam conditions, I would not even need the formula. I can only look at the question and take my answer like this. I'll just look at the two isotopes. As I'm seeing them there, I'm seeing 38 and 41. And then look at the abundances under them. And what am I seeing? 0 0.7 and 0 0.3. So very quickly, I'll just ask myself, what's the difference? Here, yeah, the difference is 3. This 0 0.3 times 3, that gives me 0 0.9. If I add it to 38, what does it give me? 38.9. Or, back to this. This is what I'm seeing in the question. 38 and 41, 70 and 30%. 0 0.7 times. The difference between these two numbers is 3. That gives me 2.1. If I subtract that from 41, I'll get 38.9. So those are different ways of solving isotopic questions, especially when it involves just two isotopes. But when we have more than two isotopes, then we could begin to have problems in that these formulas will not work. And then we would only have to solve with this main formula, just that by then you need to add plus abundance of the third isotope times the mass of the third isotope and so forth so you just continue your formula even if you have five isotopes you go ahead like that up to a5 times m5 then finally there are questions on isotopy where you are not asked to calculate average atomic mass you may have been given average atomic mass and asked to calculate something else maybe abundance of the heavier isotope or abundance of the lighter isotope you can use any of these formulas even in such cases all you need to do is make whatever you are looking for the subject of the formula so you try to practice on this look for more questions on this to solve 
and I believe that these two formulas will not fail as long as you are dealing with a two isotope situation. Thanks for watching this video. Remember to tell your friends about this channel, Dr. Quinty, D R Q U I N T Y, no space in between. Remember to subscribe, remember to share this video, and God bless you as you do. I'll see you in our next video. Stay blessed until then.